In this problem, we have a wave on a string. Now, we're told this string has a tension of 13 newtons, that the mass per unit density of this string is 0.54 kilograms per meter. So this string weighs 0.54 kilograms for every meter you have of it. The amplitude of this wave in the string is 3.2 centimeters. Now, that distance is measured from the center to the top of the wave. That's the amplitude there, 3.2 centimeters. And we're told that the wave has a frequency of 16 hertz. Now, the last part of the, the problem that we're told is that it, the velocity is going in the negative x direction. So if we find positive x going towards the right, this wave is traveling to the left. So it's traveling in the negative x direction. So the first thing we're asked is, what is the speed of the wave? So A, what is the speed? What is the velocity of this wave? So we can say V equals square root force divided by mass per unit length. So this is our equation for finding the uh, velocity of a wave in a string. So this m over l is what I've labeled as rho. Rho is generally density, m over l, mass per unit length, that's density. So we'll put in our values for all these. So square root of f, f is tension, that's our force, 13 newtons divided by our mass per unit length of rho 0.54 kilograms per meter. Okay, so that turns out to be um, 13 divided by 0.54 gives you 4.9 meters per second. So that is the velocity of our wave in this string. So part B asks us, what is the wavelength of this wave? Okay, we know the velocity, we know the frequency, we can figure out the wavelength. V equals F lambda. So lambda equals V over F. So if you kept this in your calculator with all the significant digits, you can write that, keep that in, just divide by F. 4.9 meters per second divided by a frequency of 16 hertz. One over second cancels one over second, leaving our wavelength in meters of 0 0.30665 meters rounding for my final answer is 0 0.31 meters. Okay, last thing we're asked is to define a mathematical expression for this wave motion. So if we put in our general expression, y equals a sine 2 pi f t minus plus 2 pi x over lambda. Okay, so when we write this, a is our amplitude, sine, 2 pi, you generally always leave the pi's, you're not going to actually write that as a number and multiply it. Uh, f, frequency, you're going to replace, you're going to leave t, that's going to be your variable, you're going to have to choose minus or plus, the, the top one minus is if it's going in the positive direction. Since we're going in the negative direction, we, we're going to use the plus sign. 2 pi, we leave, x we leave, that's our variable. Lambda, our wavelength we know, we'll put in there as well. So we write this out. Y, our formula is going to be A, amplitude. Um, we were given our amplitude in centimeters, we're going to write it in meters. You want to keep everything in meters and hertz with no, with no uh, subscripts at the start, like C for centimeters or micrometers or kilohertz. So 3.2 centimeters goes to point. 0, 0.032 meters, there's 100 centimeters in a meter, sine, now, 2 pi times frequency times time. So we take, uh, I'm going to take this frequency of 16 hertz and multiply by the 2 to give us 32 pi times time, okay? 
then I'm going to use the minus, no sorry, the plus, because we're going, we're going in the negative direction, so we use the plus, and 2 pi, actually I'm going to divide this lambda into this 2. So our wavelength is 0 0.31, divide that into our 2, and we get 6.45, pi x. Okay, so if I write that so we can get it all in one line, y equals 0 0.032 meters sine 32 pi t plus 6.45 pi x. So this is your final answer for C.